Hello my quilting friends! My name is Leah Day and welcome to this tutorial on piecing on the Janome 1600. So straight out of the box, the Janome 1600 comes with two feet and they're really designed for garment sewing or project sewing than they are for quilt piecing. So for this, you're gonna want the patchwork foot specifically designed for the Janome 1600. And I believe it's also compatible with the HD9. So let me show you how this foot works straight out of the box and how I do a little modification to make it work better for me as well. First, let's go over how I set up my Janome 1600 for piecing. I'm gonna set my stitch length at 1.5 millimeters. So over here on my stitch length dial, I'm gonna click that until the little indicator is right between the one and the two. I might actually tilt that slightly towards the number one, simply because I like to create a very tight, tiny stitch. I've threaded the machine up with Arafil 50 weight Mako cotton in both the top and the bobbin. And I have stitched through a scrap charger. What this is is basically just a two inch wide strip of fabric. I fold it in half and I stitch through it. And that is going to take care of my loose threads. If the machine gags, that's gonna happen on that scrap. It's not gonna happen on my quilt block. And I am piecing one of my coasters for my coaster plate stir pattern today. I think this is gonna be really pretty. Okay, so I'm gonna place this on top and I, because I have seam allowance on this piece, I'm gonna flip it over so that way it is face up. One thing I also do is I place a queen size supreme slider here to the front of the machine. This is pretty. This is a tool that I use pretty much all the time. I, it's really designed for free motion quilting. You can see that there's a center hole here that is designed to cover your feed dogs and you just line that up with your needle hole whenever you are free motion quilting and it just makes your pieces and your quilt slide and glide over the surface. Well, I found that I really love to leave this on my machine all the time because it's so useful for so many different things. Uh, so I move it to the front here off the feed dogs completely and it just helps my pieces slide over all those bumps and lumps to the front of the machine. I find that it really just speeds up my process and makes piecing feel that much faster, that much easier. So I'm gonna line this up. And one last thing, this machine is so simple, but there's very few features that you can adjust, but you might be wondering about them. I have my needle set to always end in the down position, and I have the pressure of my presser foot set to three. There is a knob up here on the top of the machine where I can adjust that, and I can see in this indicator that it is on the number three, and that is the right amount of pressure I find for 100% cotton fabric. But play with that, see if it works good for you too. Now I'm gonna use the knee lifter here that is underneath the machine, that is underneath the table, and I'm just using my knee to push that over, and that lifts the foot, so that way I can slide the pieces underneath. Now I zoomed in so you can really clearly see this patchwork foot. You can see that we have a black guide here attached to the side, and that is intended to help you stay on track as you begin stitching so that you can line up the edges of your fabric with that guide and that's gonna help keep you within that quarter inch seam allowance. And I can say if it's your preference to use a guide, then that's gonna work great and go on ahead and use it. It's quite honestly just not something that I like to have. Uh, I like to really be able to see the side of my foot and because this is in place and it's very dark in color, I can't see the side of the foot to make sure that my pieces aren't slipping beyond the edge of the foot or not going all the way to the edge. You know, so there's two things that can happen whenever you're piecing with a guide. You can accidentally have the pieces slip this way and that is closer to your needle so you're stitching with too small of a stitch uh, seam allowance or you can actually be pushing against the guide and push it outward and then be stitching with too big of a seam allowance. So for both of those reasons, because I just can't see that edge and it's not my preference to use a guide on my patchwork foot, I actually take that off. So I'm gonna show you how to do that next. So here is the Janome patchwork foot and you can see that this guide is attached by a very tiny screw. So you can use a screwdriver like for your glasses uh, it's that small of a screw and unscrew this 
and take that screw off and remove the guide without breaking it. And this is nice because if ever you decide that you want to try the guide again, you can always reattach it. But if you know it's not for you and it's just not your favorite way to piece, well, then you can just unscrew that screw and then gently remove it. It needs to kind of, it's kind of hooked to a little nubbin here in the back and just wiggle it a little bit and it'll come right off. So there we go. That is how I have modified my patchwork foot. I want to make sure to save the guide and save that little screw but that is how I modify it. And now I can get a perfect quarter inch seam allowance to both the left and right of the needle. I can clearly see where I'm piecing on both sides as well. And this just makes it work better for me. Now, I want you to give it a try and try it both with the guide and without the guide and see what works best for you. Now, I know one more question that you might have and that is, is this a scant quarter inch or is this a full quarter inch? And this is a full quarter inch seam allowance. So we're back at the machine. I'm gonna lift that presser foot using my knee lifter, stitch through my scrap charger. And I always stop with my needle one or two stitches off the scrap and in the down position. So that way I can use my knee lifter to lift the presser foot and then have these next pieces stacked perfectly on top of one another and then I slip them right underneath the foot, right up against the needle. This is kind of like putting it in jail because the next stitch is going to be on the fabrics and they're gonna be perfectly locked together. And as you can see now, I can definitely see that edge. I can tell when my fabrics are slipping out beyond it. I can also tell when they're slipping underneath it and not quite a big enough seam allowance. Having that good visual is so, so important for accurate quilt piecing. And another thing about the Janome 1600, you can really put your foot down. <laughs> I'm not even barely using the speed that this machine can go up to. Uh, it can go really, really fast. Of course, after piecing, I always finger press my seam allowances open and flat. And I know there's always that question of, is that actually okay? Won't it weaken your seam when you are quilting? And the truth is I have never had an issue with that. This is part of the reason why I stitch with such a tiny stitch length. I lower my stitch length to 1.5 millimeters or even just a little bit smaller than that. Makes them an absolute beast to pick out if I make a mistake, but they are absolutely locked together. So I don't have any worry about pressing my seam allowances wide open. So I gave my coaster a press and now I'm ready to add the other strips. And let's just see how fast that we can go on this Janome 1600. I'm gonna get started, make sure I got my needle in it, make sure that I'm established well. I'm gonna come down here to the other end. I'm putting a little fingertip pressure on that piece, lining it up with my piece of fabric on top, making sure everything's perfect. And then now I'm gonna put my foot down. <laughs> That is, oh, wow. <laughs> and to be honest, I am only, I am barely pressing on it, guys. That is, that is barely half the speed that this machine can go so, so fast. Uh, it's honestly just a little bit scary because I don't want to stitch through it so fast, you know, um, but I'm barely, I'm just not using all those speeds that I have access to. I'm going to try it one more time and let's see if I can really put my foot down. And of course I wanna maintain accuracy, but I wanna play with the machine and see just how fast it can go. All right, I'm gonna go pedal to the metal. We'll see what will happen. Woo, there we go. <laughs> All right, I got off a little bit at the end, but it is one of the things that's really special about this Janome 1600. It can stitch 1600 stitches per minute. So obviously you might not want to stitch that fast for quilt piecing. You want to maintain absolute perfect seam allowances, but it'll definitely come in handy for machine quilting. And I'll be sharing more videos on that coming up soon. That's it for this tutorial. Learn more about the Janome 1600 and find compatible feet and accessories at leahday.com slash Janome.